Hi, welcome. So in this video, I'm just going to discuss how we compute work using integrals. So the reason we're talking about this is that we can use integrals to find physical quantities. So to me, this means like quantities that you might be asked to find in a physics class or honestly, even in another class that might be using calculus. And the example that we've seen before, at least in my sequence of videos, is velocity, displacement, and distance. So we used the velocity function and we found the area under the curve, which is an integral, to find the displacement or the distance. So the idea here is that we can use integrals to find other quantities. So there are lots of possibilities and math textbooks often go through a couple more than I'm doing here, like maybe density or centers of mass. I'm just going to focus on computing work here and this same train of thought follows for all of the other examples. So when we talk about work, we usually talk about work as force times distance. So what I want to do is just go through a little bit of the units here so we understand where those are coming from, and then we'll talk about how this becomes an integral. So for force, we usually use newtons, which is n, and in distance we might use meters or centimeters. So these are just examples. There are other types or other units we could be using. Then if you want to talk imperial units rather than metric, we might use pounds for force, that's LB, or we could use feet or inches for distance. But I'm going to focus more on the metric units. Then it's common that we break force up into mass times acceleration, and so these have their own units. So mass would be kilograms or grams, and acceleration might be something like meters per second squared. And of course here we also have imperial units. I actually learned this for the first time when I was making this video. The slug is the unit of mass in imperial units, which is sort of interesting. It goes into the pounds calculation for force. Or we might have something like feet per second squared for acceleration. But like as I said, I'm going to focus on the metric units here. So now just noticing this mass times acceleration, if I use the kilograms times the meters per second squared, this is actually my Newton units. So kilograms times meters per second squared is my units for the force, and that's often what you'll see there. Then what we do is we look at the force times the distance. So the Newtons times the meters is going to be our unit for work, and we call this a joule. So this is joules, which is Newtons times meters. All right, so this is just to make sure we sort of understand the relationships that go into work, but let's look at some graphs and figure out what's going on and why this has anything to do with an integral. So if I graph some axes here and I think about x being the position on the horizontal axis and force being the output on the vertical axis, then let's look first at a case where my force is just constant. So it's a linear function, it's just a horizontal line, and so the force is the same regardless of what position we're at. So if we look at the force over an interval from A to B, when the force is constant, the work is simply just the force times the distance. And we can think of this as the area made here. So the area under the force curve on the interval from A to B. So that A to B becomes our distance and the vertical is the force. And we just multiply them together, that's how we find the area of a rectangle, and that becomes our formula for work. However, this changes a little bit when the force is variable, meaning it's going to be more complicated than just this horizontal function. So let's graph another example here. Let's say my force is something more curvy, and we're going to call this our variable force. So now when we look at the area, or the area under the curve, we want something similar, but we're going to need to use an integral now because we can't just compute this area using geometry. We can't just do length times width or force times distance. We're going to need to use an integral. So we're going to add up a bunch of little rectangles like we would a Riemann sum, but this is really just an integral. And so we're going to look at the integral from A to B of our force dx. And the reason this is is because we're adding those little rectangles they have a height of the force function, so we're going from the axis up to that force function, and they have a width of the distance, the dx, the little change in x, and that is a distance. So because we can relate it back to the area under the force curve, that's why we're getting that work is this integral. 
So if you're ever asked to find the work and you have information about the force, but the force depends on x, so it's a formula that has a variable in it, you're going to need to use an integral to find the work. Alright, so I'm going to save the example for another video, but this is just the basic concept of how we get that work is the integral of force. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.